Hey, it's Mercedes with Frameless Media. Today we are discussing Run the World Season 2, Episode 5, Homecoming. And the ladies are having a pretty much having a life-changing moment. Uh, Whitney, she has decided to heal, move on. She's taking her therapist's advice. So she decides to join a dating app, but soon discovers that Ola is also on that dating app. What a coincidence, right? And Sandy, she has to not only break the news to Matthew that she does not want to move forward with this um, engagement. Um, she pretty much is saying no. Uh, she wants to focus on her career and on her PhD, but she also has to break the news to Amari, which pleasantly goes very well. Like she was thinking that Amari wasn't going to take it that well, but she does. And um, Renee. She's still dating Preston. Um, they don't have any labels yet, so they're not boyfriend and girlfriend. They're just two people getting to know each other. Now, while they're out talking, having drinks, Renee gets heartbreaking news that her grandmother has passed away. So that means packing up, going back home, and paying her condolences. So we do get to see uh, Renee's mom and aunt and some other family members. And Whitney also goes along, too, because she gets to stop to see her parents. And, of course, Sandy is along. You know, she comes along for um, support. And um, Renee, at first, she's excited about being back home. But then we learn that her family is, is really depending on her to help pay for the expense of the funeral. Um, that's a lot of pressure on Renee because they're still thinking that she's still at Eclipse when she has to now break the news that, hey, I left. I have my own business. Money is tight right now, but, you know, whatever. I, you know, it's, it's, it's Nana. So let's, you know, she decides to pay for it. Um, also, too, while all of this is taking place and they are making funeral arrangements, Whitney is visiting her parents. And it seems very awkward and odd at first when they're meeting because here it is, it's after the breakup. Their daughter's not getting married. Ola's no longer around. Um, Whitney soon discovers that um, Ola and her parents are still communicating with one another, um, which is not hard to believe because Ola and Whitney, they dated for a long time. They dated all throughout college. So you develop those bonds, those connections. So... I don't see why Whitney is surprised that they're still communicating because just because you and Ola stop talking, you can't expect for your parents to just cut the communication as well. You know, that's a hard thing to do. So Whitney's kind of feeling some type of way. Um, but later she does talk to her parents and, you know, they love her. That's that's their, you know, that's their daughter. And she's always going to be number one, you know, just because she's not getting married, you know, things happen, you know, it's, Time to move on, but you know you can't expect for them to just cut communication the same way you're doing with Ola. So, also too, um, at the funeral, um, Renee she does get Ella to help write the eulogy, which turned out beautifully. But also at the uh, funeral, she sees Jason. Jason pops up out of nowhere. Um, I thought that was a, a quite pleasant surprise, but glad to see that he's there for his support, even though they're not on the best of terms right now. Um, they do talk. They, you know, hey, how's things going? Jason is doing very well. His band has signed with the label. They now have a songwriter. Seems like everything's moving in the right direction. And Renee making connections. She's building up her agency. And um, she does share with Jason that... Um, she is heartbroken about her grandmother passing, but there was one thing that she really wanted the most that her grandmother left for her. And that was this fur, like little fur shawl. And come to find out um, her mother had sold it. You know, they were trying to get money for the funeral, which I understand. And plus, they didn't know that Renee wanted that fur little shawl. They didn't know that that was something that um, the Nana had left for her. And Jason does the unthinkable. He uh, goes out of his way without Renee even knowing and finds the fur shawl. Um, takes her breath away. She's literally almost in tears. I'm almost in tears too because that was so sweet of him to do that. Like he really didn't have to go over and beyond, but he did because he is still in love with her. Now that is real love right there. He wraps it around her. And just when I think they're about to kiss each other, 
the personal driver walks in and is gathering uh, Renee's stuff. So it's time to leave. So it, it, it ends there, but just want to bring up um, some key points uh, about relationships, connections. Uh, we see that with Sandy and Amari. Like She's been around Amari uh, for two years. They have developed that connection. And the fact that she's walking away from this relationship you know, it's very hard to because you form that bond, that relationship with Amari, you know, the all the time they spent together, you know, two years is a long time. Um, I'm just kind of wondering how is her storyline moving forward? Because Matthew, I don't know, like it could be one or two things. I can see Sandy wanting to keep the door open, keep a relationship open with Amari, even though she's not with Matthew. My question is, will Matthew allow it or will he block it? You know, because he's still hurt, too. Like he's hurt from the breakup and he may not want Sandy around. You know, it's too reminiscent. Also, too, I'm wondering if this leaves room for Naomi and Matthew to reconcile. So I'm just wondering if the writers are moving in that direction, because if so, if Naomi and Matthew rekindle, then I'm just wondering how Sandy is going to feel about that. You know, will she have a change of heart? So um, another thing with connections, um, Renee and Jason, the fact that she's trying to move on, but you can still see that her heart is still with Jason, you know, so trying to move on with Preston and Preston has it all. He has all the money, he has everything that a girl will want. But here it is. I feel like Renee still has the door open for Jason. There is something there. The chemistry is there. The connection is still there. You just don't cut it off and just move on like that. So I kind of saw that coming. She's kind of going to be torn between the two. I feel like in the end, she might end up choosing Jason if Jason still wants the same things that she wants. And um, lastly, like with Whitney, her parents still having that connection with Ola. It's hard to break communication with someone that you've grown to, uh, to love, to uh, that you've been interacting with for years. And the fact that your daughter is no longer seeing that person, you know, that, that was your future son-in-law. It's hard to cut that communication and you can't expect that, you know, like that's, that's like me. Um, I remember years ago I had a two best friends and they ended up not getting along, not sure what happened, but I got stuck in the middle. I almost felt like I had to choose between the two of them. So I um, hate being in that situation, but you can't just expect someone to just cut that connection, to cut that tie. You know, so that was one thing I started learning um, in this episode. It's just a lot of soul ties, a lot of connections there and people still hanging on to those connections and not being able to move forward. So but great episode. I give it a 10 out of 10. Hands down, it was a great episode. I was tuned in all the way, loved it all the way to the end. Looking forward to the next episode to see what uh, comes along the way for the, for the ladies. Um, leave your comments below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys for another review. Bye.